Understand nicely, but you think about something else. Think about my kata. If Maya is completely opposite from Krishna, Maya, so how can be non different from Krishna? Think about this. Oh, sorry. The definition of Brahma, of God, says that he has no Swagata, Swajate, and Bijate, Bhid. Bijate means someone completely opposite, like for example, man and woman. Actually, both are human beings, men and women. <coughs> both are the same species. According to species, both are human, so men and women are both women, uh, human beings, but according to body, they are different. Mm. So both are human beings, but they are different, men and women. But Maya and Krishna, they are completely different, just like day and night. <coughs> Krishna is like the sun and Maya is like darkness. Whatever Krishna is, Maya cannot be there. Whatever Krishna is present, Maya cannot be there. But how can Maya be non different from Krishna? Bedrohit means without difference. One of the definitions of Brahma means of God, means something that's completely opposite of Him is also non different. So, how can you establish this? This is a logical thinking. Your brain must work for that. Another point is. Maya is the potency of Bhagavan, Maya Shakti. Chit Shakti, Jiva Shakti, and Maya Shakti. And then the scriptures explain also. There's no difference between Shakti and Shakti Mam. God and the possessor, His potency, God and His potency, there's no difference. So Maya is a potency. Okay, you understand that spiritual potency and the souls are non different from Krishna but how can you understand that Maya is non different also from Krishna because all the potency is non different from the possessor of the potency Krishna is the possessor of the potency Shaktiman the word Shaktiman means he has all the potencies inside him inside him all the potencies are present Example, you have the potency to see, that's why you can see. You have the potency to walk, that's why you can walk. But sometimes your potency is manifested, sometimes not. When you start walking, then your potency to walk is manifesting. Now, for example, you have the potency to walk, but you're not walking. So your potency is not in activity. Do you understand what I said? Try to understand. You're not moving now, but you have the potency to move, you have the potency to walk, you have the potency to see as well, the potency to walk and to see. Maya is always inside Bhagavan, also, because it's a potency. So, but also you say, we hear, <coughs> scriptures explain that Maya is always far from Krishna. Maya is always far from Krishna, so how possible at the same time is inside Krishna? <coughs> so I told it first our first subject is that Brahma, God doesn't have difference between Swagat, Bijatya and Swajatya <coughs> meaning so Bijatya means something completely opposite of him there's no difference between God and this thing so Maya how Maya is a potency inside Krishna at the same time is completely different from him, Bijatya, completely opposite. And at the same time they are non-different. So two examples are given. Our body, for example. You have the nails, your nails and your hair. Even though they are limbs of the body, they are also not limbs of your body. Look. The nails and the hair, so limbs of body, but at the same time not limbs. You can cut them. You can cut your nails and your hair. 
The nails are in your body. And sin. Even though it's a limb of a body, it's not a limb at the same time. <coughs> because you can cut and separate it from your body and you won't feel any pain. But if you cut your finger or your hand, you'll feel pain. And so, the nail is nourished by your body. Nourished by the body or nail. So it's growing. When it grows such size, then you cut your nails. Even though it's a limb of your body, it's also a separate thing from your body. So in the same way, Maya, even though it's a potency of Bhagavan, is also at the same time separate. Stay separate from God. Another example. But how is inside Bhagavan, Maya? So the example is exactly given, just like the spider. <coughs> the spider group, they was looking at the spider and explaining. Urnaba is spider in Sanskrit. So the spider is eating its own saliva. The, actually, that saliva is poisonous, saliva of the spider. So it's eating its own poison, but there's no effect because it's its own poison. And something very amazing is that with its own saliva, the spider is creating the web, and then it's eating their own saliva to move in the in the web. When the spider goes up and sometimes falls, actually it's eating its own saliva and going back up. It has eight legs. So the spider is moving and going up. It's it's re first removes its own saliva to create the ab, web. The web is made by the own saliva, and then it eats the saliva and go up and down and to the side of the web. This is something so impressive. This is the creation, impressive and inconceivable potency of the creation of God. So if it's own saliva, the spider creates the web. And it doesn't get stuck or caught in the web. It doesn't get caught in the web, the spider. And it's moving in the web everywhere. But other insects like mosquitoes or something fall in the web and get caught. And then the spider eats that insect. So in the same way, Maya, even though it's inside Bhagavan, it doesn't touch Bhagavan. Maya is inside Bhagavan but doesn't touch Bhagavan. This is inconceivable. Even though it's a potency of Bhagavan, Bhagavan doesn't touch it. Just like if you put oil in the water, the oil will not mix with the water. Isn't it? It's always separate. Understand? For example, the lotus flower, lotus petal, even inside the water, but it's not touching the water. So in the same way, Bhagavan, if it's Maya Shakti, created the material world, but doesn't affect him. Brahma, through Maya Shakti, is actually controlled by Maya and is doing the job of creation, Brahma. Shiva is also destroying, but Vishnu nourishes all the living entities, but he is not touched by Maya. So one is touched by Maya and the other one is not touched by Maya. Like Brahma and Shiva are touched by Maya and Vishnu not. Brahma and Shiva, they touch Maya to create or destroy the material world. The guns of Maya, the material natures, modes of material nature. Like Brahma takes shelter of the mm, mode of passion and uh, Shiva mode of ignorance. But Vishnu, he's taking care of all the living entities, but he doesn't touch Maya. In the Brahma Sanita, all this is described.
She's asking, we are souls. We came from God. So in the same principle, we are also separate and at the same time inside or? So this achinta bheda bhetata, inconceivable difference and non-difference at the same time. All the qualities of God are present in the jivas, but in a very minor way. But not all the qualities, some. Like, for example, Narayana has 60 qualities that the jiva doesn't have. Jiva only has 50 in a minor way. Jiva and Maya are different things. Maya is separate. Maya is separate. But because the jiva is very small, Maya can control the jiva. <coughs> so this, this is another conception. So the soul thinks he's separate under Maya, but not separate. The jiva is also spiritual. Maya doesn't do anything towards him. Maya just covers the living entity outside, from outside. And then the jiva is deluded by Maya inside. Like now, in your heart, the soul in your body, in your heart, exists, the soul is not touching your body, not touching. Because the soul is transcendental and your body is material. Material and spiritual things cannot touch each other. Just like a cat, for example, if you cover a basket, you can cover a cat with a basket. But the cat and the basket are always different. The basket is material and the cat is a, alive, right? It's an animal, it's a living being, but they are separate. Everywhere, like from all directions, you can cover the cat in the basket and it will be inside. So in the same way, the soul doesn't touch the body. But now, the jeev, conditioned soul, is deluded by Maya. In a fainted position, the soul is fainted. Just like if someone is in a coma, you know someone is in a coma in the hospital? Do you understand what is a coma? The person is alive, but doesn't have any consciousness or knowledge, not doing anything. But the heartbeat is, is beating, his heartbeat is going on. So the jiva is inside the body, he's asking. <coughs> so that soul is like move, running the body or? The soul is there, that's why the body is working. The soul is actually not doing anything inside the body. Now the soul is just like in a fainted position, completely fainted. No, you said that the body is running the body. The soul is running the body? No, no, the soul is faint, faint, fainted. Maya is running the body. Now your pure soul is not doing anything. It's in a fainted position. It's fainted. Whatever karma you did in the past, that karma makes you do stuff, that rea those reactions. But you think you think that you are doing, but it's actually not true. You are not the body, you are the soul. You are the soul. Example, you are not your house. You are the owner of the house. If this body is like a house, who lives in this body? The soul. Because the soul is in the body, the body is working. Mind, intelligence, ego, the subtle body is doing everything. Who is suffering and enjoying? The soul, the body or the mind? The soul doesn't do anything, it's just fainted, faint. 
So try to understand. What is your soul doing in your body right now? It's fainted, fainted. Sleeping. Unconscious. <coughs> Unconscious. Or fainted. But Maya is such a potency that whatever doing, you think that you are doing. The three modes of nature made, make you do stuff. Who is suffering? Feeling suffering. Who is suffering? The soul is not suffering. The pure soul that is inside your body now is fainted. She's asking, but how do you feel? Is your mind is feeling through your mind? Through your intelligence and ego, they are doing everything. So the subtle body is actually doing things. You think it's me, I am doing. But the soul, your soul is completely fainted. She's saying, well, what we feel in the Harikata? This is in the mind. Yes. Your mind is material. But your soul also has a mind. So when your mind, material mind, connects to the soul, mind of your soul, then your soul wakes up. When the mind of your body connects to the mind of your, when the mind of your body connects to the mind of your soul, then your soul wakes up. So, so how to wake up your soul? Because now you're sleeping like Kumbhakarna. Who? Your soul is sleeping like your soul is sleeping like Kumbhakarna. The soul also has senses. But now they're sleeping. You have to make wake up your soul. Your soul is sleeping. Wake up your soul. Wake up your soul. Wake up your soul which is sleeping. What is the way to wake up your soul? Holy names. Harikatha. So we think we were awake, but we're not, we're sleeping. So it's very hard to understand about the soul. Con? 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 Nachiketa. Nachiketa went to Jam Maharaj and asked this to him. It's a story in the Puranas. The father of Nachiketa. So the father of Nachiketa. What is the name of his father? His father gave donation of cows, but old cows. He gave donation of old cows. Then Nachiketa told his father, you are giving donation as cows, but you are giving these bad cows to the Brahmins. You should give good cows, not bad cows. But his father said, you are a kid. You don't, don't need this. You don't understand. But again and again he was telling this to the father and the father was not answering answering properly. Nachiketa said, Father, what do you give to me? And then the father was not answering. And then finally the father said, I'll give you jump. I'll give you like death. I'll give you death to you. Nachiketa said, okay, so if you're giving me death, I'm going to jump look to the place of death. Nachiketa going, going, he came to Jampuri, the city of death at the time the doors of Jam Maharaj was closed were closed for three days he was staying outside he said my father had given me the boon of a death like for example if someone gives a cow you have a cow now so his father gave him the death Jam so for three days he was staying, staying outside the gates of Jamaluk after three days when the gate was open, the servant of Jamaraj So there's someone alive here, they told Jamaraj How a alive person was able to come here, someone alive? And Nichiketa was also nothing less. Nichiketa said, I want to meet directly with Jamaraj, he said. Do you understand? 
You cannot go in this body to Jamalok. Only those who can go to Jamalok is that those who give up the body. Then they can go to Jamalok. They can have to go. They give up the subtle body, then they have to go to Jamalok. Who can go to Jamalok? So you have to go in the subtle body, not in the gross body. But then Chiketa said, no, I want to meet directly Jamaraj. I want to see Jamaraj directly, he said. Then all the servants of Jamaraj, how possible, how possible. Then they told Jamaraj about the situation. There's one person that for three days is standing outside your gates. Gates of Jamaraj. Just to see you. And we're not allowing. And he said, but he said that if he doesn't see Jamaraj, he'll continue staying there until he sees Jamaraj. Jamaraj finally came out. Said, okay. Jamaraj came to him. And he told everything. Look, my father, give me your donation, like jam. So I want to stay with you and see you. Jam, jam. Mritu, Anyway, they, he met Jamaraj. Nichiketa met, met Jamaraj. No, no, just like an abstract to say that the father gave you Jam. Means he gave you Jamaraj. Jamaraj became so impressed. Your father gave this donation to you? Yes. Yokar, I want to stay with you. Jamaraj said, if you want to stay with me, not with this body. Only after death you can come here. Ask for another benediction. Jamaraj told him, you cannot stay with me. Only those who stay with me, only those, after giving up their body, gross body, then can come. But he was alive and he said, no, no, my father gave me donation of you, so I want to come and stay with you. Jamaraj was thinking what to do. He didn't want to go away, the Nichiketa. He was not an ordinary person. Son of Rishi or something very big personality. Then Jamaharaj said, okay, so tell me something about death, he said. And at that moment, Jamaharaj told, look, this is something very confidential subject. What is death? Who dies? Is the body or the mind or the soul? What? Tell me about this. He was a young kid, but he had. He wanted to know about this because the body is dead. Your body has two things. One is subtle body. Another. Okay, this is the subtle, the gross body. So two things inside: stool, uh, subtle body, and your soul. This is tool sharir, means gross body. So all the activities of your gross body, they are doing because the atma sharir, the body of the soul is inside. Example is given, just like if you put the water, you were boiling water, so you have a, like a cup, silver cup with water, like if you're boiling water in a, in a kettle, suppose. In the oven, you're putting the fire underneath, underneath, right? In the burner. But that is heating up the water which is inside the pot. The water is not directly connected to the fire because the water is inside that pot or the kettle. Or the underneath part of the pot is actually touching the fire and it's getting heated up. And then, because it's connected to the water, then the water is hot. And then you put rice inside. Then the rice, the rice starts changing, right? Cooking. The rice starts changing. Rice was dark, um, hard, but now it's becoming soft. 
Now we will start calling bat means cooked rice. So that so the rice was not directly connected to the fire. The fire was directly connected to the pot, to the pot, to the pot, to the under under part of the part of the pot which is on the burner of the stove. You put, you made that thing hot, and that thing made. So the fire made the pot hot. The pot made the water hot, and the water is making the rice, which is inside, become soft. So it's a long, it's a distance, distant relationship. You have to think about a distant connection. But still, the rice is cooked. It's changing. Transformation happening to the rice. So in the same way, what's Maya doing to us? Our soul is not directly connected to Maya, no. This is the gross body. So inside the subtle body is this is the body of the soul, but the body of the soul is also not touching the subtle body. Atma Shari is not touching your Sukshma Shari. But your soul is transformed. The soul. The soul. The activity of the soul is transformed. And it forgot in Bhagavan, the soul, and is sleeping, like a fainted. The pure soul. Actually, the pure soul doesn't touch Maya. Why? Because the soul is transcendental, spiritual, and Maya is material. Jara Maya, material. Maya is different, separate. So material things doesn't touch, don't touch spiritual things. Something very impressive, isn't it? One doesn't touch the other one. But the jiva is so small, diminut, like minor, that Maya covers, like surrounds the soul completely. It's actually, you cannot understand spiritual things by material examples. So how is it possible? If Maya is material, and the soul is spiritual, so remember two things. Material things don't touch spiritual things. First, you must understand the Siddhanta. Where the spiritual things are there, material things cannot touch it. But the action is just like, for example, the example of the fire and the rice. They were not touching each other directly when you're cooking the rice. Do you understand? The rice that you're cooking, you're cooking rice. The rice is not directly touching the fire. But still the rice is changing, like transforming and cook, being cooked and changing its nature. Like it's a form, right? So in the same way, Maya and the soul don't have directly relationship. Maya and the soul doesn't have directly, don't have directly direct relationship contact. But Maya, with its activities, is deluding the soul. Just like the fire and the rice. They don't have direct contact or relationship. But now the rice is being transformed. Have you, do you understand? Try to understand. If you understand, understand. If you don't, what to do? A thousand times if I say you don't understand. Quietly listen. First now listen carefully. Try to understand. The example given. The fire is touching the pot. The under part of the pot, the below the pot. 
And inside the pot there is water. So the lower part of the pot. The fire is underneath. The water is connected to what? To the pot. So the fire makes the pot hot, the pot hot makes the water hot, and the water is there, and the water gets hot, warmed, heated, because the water is heated, then the rice, what happens? Cooks. So it transforms. So in the same way, soul is, doesn't have direct relationship with Maya. Understand? Look, but Maya is doing such a way that's deluding the living entities. So Maya is surrounding the Jiva, covering from all sides. This, the soul is very minded, small. It's minded. In Vedanta Darshan, there is an example, just like a baby lion, baby lion, cub, baby cub, lion cub, you call it? A lion cub is born, but the sheep, you know, the sheep cover are surrounded lion cub. But later on, later on the baby, the lion cub grows and roars, and then all the sheep run away. So in the same way, the soul, the soul is very subtle. So Maya is around, covering from all sides. But when the soul manifests its spirituality it's it's already spiritual the soul but when the chit shakti manifest transforms the soul when the spiritual potency transforms the soul when actually the soul is already spiritual but but when expands like it's spirituality that's it then maya leaves the jiva chitana charitam explains this so Jam Maharaj told that boy that the death is only in the body. It's material, material body. But who is inside the material body? The subtle body. The subtle body is like material. Material. Chetan Chetanabhas. Chetanabhas. A semblance of spiritual. Like the mind is not completely material and the mind is not completely spiritual. It's called Chetanabhas, like a semblance of a spiritual consciousness. Try to understand this Tata Siddhanta. Because the mind is Chetanabhas, like looks like spiritual, semblance of spiritual, is not material, not material, the mind. Chetanabhas is a semblance of consciousness, sorry. So the mind is not material and not conscious. For example, if there is a brick wall, you cannot see on the other side. But if it is a glass wall, then you can see the other side of the wall. But the wind cannot go to the other side of a glass wall. But you can see who is inside the glass, if there is a glass wall or... It's also material, a glass. Black screen, black screen. Huh? You said black screen. Não, se tiver um ali a casa de vidro, você consegue ver do outro lado e é material, mas se for de tijolo, você não consegue ver. So in the same way, our mind. It's called chetanabhas, like a semblance of conscious. 
The mind is not completely material, not completely con conscious. Mas também todo consciente é espiritual, né? É, mas de qualquer forma... É. É. So the soul is inside the subtle body. So who dies? The body dies. When the body... So when the... When the subtle body is apart from the gross body, your body doesn't grow, doesn't transform anymore. Doesn't. So the elements of the body, they start separating. Earth, ether, fire, earth, they go separate ways. Now your soul is inside. The soul is inside. It's not connected to the body, but still making activities. Example. Example of the, ri the rice and the fire that are not connected. The fire has rela relation directly with the pot, in the earth, on the lower part of the pot only. And that making that part hot and that makes the water hot, warm, heated. And the water becomes warm, and then the rice which is inside will transform. So in the same way, Maya and the soul are not connected. The soul is just like sleep, like fainted inside. You didn't understand. I couldn't hear. Ah, he said the soul is not doing anything. Yeah, the soul is not doing anything. But because the soul is there, activity happens. Even as I said a thousand times, you never understand. Chant holy names and one day you'll understand. It says, um, you know, that's like in the Bhagavad Gita where the soul is being carried by the... The soul is fainted. Fainted or faint? How do you say? Faint. Unconscious. Unconscious. Even though the soul, because the soul is in the body, then the body is working. Do you understand? So Nichikita said, tell me something about the soul. Who dies? The soul, the body, or the subtle body. Man, Buddhi, Hankar, Chitta. Tell me about this. She's asking if the subtle body dies. Only when the soul wakens, then Maya disappears. When the soul gets knowledge, at that time the subtle body automatically will separate. When you have Atma again, your soul has like realization about itself. <coughs> and subtle body separates, like goes away. Then the soul comes out and attains Bhagavan. So you have to wake up your soul. Three lifetimes, Maharaj. Three lifetimes. To wake up the soul. The Shastra explains. Wake up your soul. Sagradev. Some yogis or other kinds of people, they sometimes they leave their gross body somewhere and with the subtle body they do many things. So they go with the soul and the subtle body to do other stuff. But even though the gross body doesn't have the soul, or maybe some people in a coma, sometimes they also say they wake up from coma and they say they were seeing their own body laying down. Like I'm just saying, like the gross body, even though the, the subtle body is not inside, the gross body can continue working, right? Sometimes. So what is the... Yogi Kerala. The yogis, they leave the gross body somewhere and they come out with the subtle body. 
and the soul is inside the subtle body. Like Shankaracharya had a similar story. Uh, so they go in the subtle body. Yeah. So the wife of Kumaril Bhatta, king, so they wanted to discuss the Shastra. Let's discuss lust Shastra. But he said, I'm a Brahmachari from birth. Shankaracharya said, Shankaracharya told, I am a sannyasi, I'm Brahmachari from birth. How can I discuss Kam Shastra about, uh, you know, like loving dealings? The wife of Kumaril Bhatta doesn't have any. Uh, I forgot. She's a very intelligent woman, learned in Shastra. So write that you are defeated. There was a discussion in scriptures between Shankaracharya and Kumaril Bhatta. But the wife of Kumaril Bhatta told Shankaracharya, according to the Hindu Shastra, the wife is half body of the husband. So you have defeated my husband. It means actually you only have one. You have to defeat me. Defeat me also. Shankaracharya said, Okay, which kind of Shastra do you want to discuss? She said, I will come a Shastra, like love, lust th things. And his mind was completely like, Shankaracharya became crazy. Like, what? First of all, I'm a sannyasi, Brahmachari, since my birth, how can I discuss like love Shastra? You know, come Shastra, like love dealing stuff. Yeah, I'm Brahmachari since my birth. How possible? Okay, so write that you are defeated. Shankaracharya said, okay. Give me two months before. Give me two months. Then Shankaracharya, what did he do? He left his gross body and with his subtle body, he entered the body of a dead king. The, body the king became alive again. And then he discussed all these philosophies with his, the wife of the king, like the wife of that king. Then with the power of his yoga, he came out of the body of that king. Then he came back to his own body, back again. Then he discussed the Shastra with the wife of Kumaril Bhatta. Then he defeated her. And then they became his disciples. Kumaril Bhatta and his wife became disciples of Shankaracharya. Later on, How do the yogis do that, Gurudev? How do they keep the body alive if they go out? Oh, sorry. Huh? How do they keep the body alive and they go out somewhere? Like, some people say that we do this in dream. Everyone does this. Some people say that uh, when we dream, sometimes, not all, there's a technique that you can go with subtle body everywhere while you're sleeping. That's true, traveling. Yogis do that, they have mystic power. Yogis with their mystic power. अष्ट सिद्धि नवदि को प्राप्त कर लेते हैं जैसे हनुमान जी वो 
Like Hanuman, when he was going to Lanka, there was a demon who wanted to eat him. It's like, okay. So he became very small when he came inside her, her mouth and he was able to come out. You know Hanuman? The soul, when the, the, the disaster wakes up when we hear Harikata. But if the opposite, then the soul doesn't get affected. Everything goes in the mind. The subtle body is doing everything. Then the soul is not affected. You're not understanding. You don't understand. Listen first, my brother. You're not hearing. You're not hearing. First, you need to listen. Don't speak. Just ask, just listen first. The soul now is doing what? Faint, unconscious. So how would the soul listen? If someone is faint or, or, or unconscious, it will listen anything? No. So the soul cannot listen anything. So first, you have to wake, make the soul wake up from the unconscious state. If someone is unconscious or fainted. What you should do? First, you have to wake that person up from that faint position. Then the person, you're again blah blah blah. You're not hearing, and you're saying opposite because you heard so many things, and you're like you heard we hear and there things opposite, and you're. Prabhuji is asking. So if the soul is fainted when you do Harinam and Harikata, then you can wake up the soul by chanting holy names. Now this will go to the subtle body and to, to the subtle body. After the subtle body, then you go to the soul, holy names, because holy names has inconceivable potency. Holy names has inconceivable potency. And the holy names will go inside your ears and go to your subtle body. To your subtle body, Sukshma Sarir. Inside the subtle body, it will go to the soul and will make the soul wake up. Just try to understand it. Just understand this. What did I say? The holy names of Bhagavan, the mantra. That's why you chant Nama Mantra. That's why. Now you're chanting holy names. When you have Seva Mukvriti, means tendency to serve Bhagavan, the holy names that you are chanting, how should chant with the tendency to serve? Understand this word. Everyone is chanting. But how to chant? With Seva Mukvriti, tendency to serve. What did I say? Seva Mukvriti. When you chant holy names like that, Holy names will go inside your ears. The ears is material, so the whole names will go inside, and then will go away to your subtle body, mind, intelligence, ego. That inside, inside the subtle body, the soul is there, and the ear of your soul, the sound will go to the ear of your soul and wake, make your soul wake up, because the holy names has this power. It's directly the form of God. Holy names. These holy names, Bhagavad Kata, are transcendental. It will go inside your ears and then it will go to your subtle body. Inside your subtle body, then your soul is there. The soul also has ears. Your soul has all senses, everything. So it will wake up. Holy names will wake up your soul. That's why you say Jiv Jag. You must wake up your soul. So when you hear Harikata or when you chant holy names, now you're not chanting pure holy names yet. But by chanting again and again, when you chant pure holy names, then that pure holy names will wake up, affect your soul. The pure holy names will affect your soul. Now you are chanting holy names. Maybe it's full of offense. So the, the, this effect will not come. So first you have to chant holy names without offense. Then that holy names, those holy names will go to, through your ears, to your subtle body, inside the subtle body, to your soul. And then the ears of your soul, that pure holy names will wake up your soul. Will touch your soul. And then it will wake up your soul. Who can wake up your soul? 
the same Nam Prabhu Nam Prabhu will wake up your soul. So, he's following you. Holy names are transcendental. Your senses cannot accept transcendental things. But the same holy names, Nam Prabhu, again and again, if you chant, without offense, if you chant, if you chant holy names without offense, this Nam Prabhu will make you wake up, will wake up your soul. Understand? So that when the Seva Mukhavriti, there are two tendencies in the soul. Seva Mukhavriti, tendency to serve, and Boga Mukhavriti, tendency to enjoy. What did I say? Seva Mukhavriti and Boga Mukhavriti. Try to understand the words. So, are you, if you have enjoying mood, then the effect won't come back. For example, des desire to attain opulence or name, fame, reputation, or for example, even liberation. So, then if you have this, the holy names will not affect your soul. If you have desire for sense gratification, liberation, and you chant holy names, these holy names will not affect your soul. So the desire for bhukti and mukti is all cheating propensity. Your soul will not be affected. So many people chant holy names. Why you chant holy names? It's for, if it's for name, fame, reputation, I'm a sadhu. I, give me a nice garden in my ear, in my neck. Give me this, give me that. If you chant holy names like this, you'll not be able to chant pure holy names. We chant holy names to wake, make our soul wake up. So Mahaprabhu said, I don't have desire for anything in this world. I don't have desire. Radhe, I don't want anything else. I don't want anything in this world, nothing. Son, daughter, grandchildren, I don't want anything. Now you have grandchildren. Do you like your grandchildren or not now? But in that day, that you don't you don't like anything in this world anymore. Then you can understand that something's been affected in your soul. Now it's very little. Speaking about it's not enough. Now, you think, oh, if I become a Radadasi, okay. But at the same time, I also want to live with my grandchildren, my children and grandchildren. True or not? No, but this will not be enough to take you there. No need to speak or I speak. Doing bhajan slowly, slowly, automatically all this will be given up. If you try to give them up, they'll make you, they'll grab you more. So I say, don't try to give up, try to connect. Connect yourself to God. The more you try to detach from Maya, the more Maya will grab you. And that's why I say, you have to do things according to your eligibility. Understand? I give up your wife, then you catch another wife? Isn't it? Somehow you go somewhere, because until you haven't have the relationship with God, Maya, you'll still be in Maya. That's why I say, don't give up anything. Just connect to God. Connect, connect. The way of, for connecting is chanting holy names. This holy name is like something unprecedented. It's, not incom it's incomparable, holy names. In Kali Yuga, except holy names, there's nothing else. The, anything you say, by chanting, chanting, by the mercy of Nam Prabhu, you'll be able to connect with God, to relate to God, means your soul will connect to the Paramatma.
Okay, stay in your family. It's okay. It's not necessary to give up your family. You do everything according to your eligibility. Where are you gonna, gonna go if you give up your family? Where are you gonna go? To Vrindavana, then after two, four days, it's gonna be too hot. Too hot. Every time he's in Vrindavan, he becomes he falls sick. So I say, why do you go to Vrindavan? He cannot do one day of Parikrama because he becomes sick. One parik once Parikrama you didn't do. Because you never did the Parikrama full. I've seen. After two days he becomes sick. You can ask him. He goes with me and then he falls sick in India. One day he does Parikrama, then he's sick again. I'm doing Parikrama for 40 years. I never left one day of Parikrama. Ask him. Even one Parikrama full he hasn't done yet. How can he do? So how can he do a full parikrama? You tell me. Do one parikrama full and nicely. So I'm saying. Okay, slowly, slowly. But do, one day you do half parikrama, one year, another year you do half parikrama. Do you think it's mathematics? Half, half, it goes a one? No. But we pacify and say, oh yeah, nice, nice, it's okay, you have to do full, full parikrama. When we speak, we don't pacify. Those who don't do anything, we say, okay, do half one year, and the other year you do half parikrama. <laughs> you cannot stay one month, so you stay 15 days, 7 days. Next year you stay more. And in 4 years you do at least one full parikrama, one, one, one week. So you eat half now and after 7 days you eat the other half of your food. No, it's not like this. Those who cannot do everything, then we're just like pacifying them. Otherwise, they will not do anything. I say, Maharaj, I'm, I'm sick, I have so many things to do in my house. I have cows, buffaloes, wife, husband, job. How can I stay one month there, Maharaj? Okay, okay, come for seven days at least. But seven days, even seven days, three days he's sick. Three days he's sick. Okay, whatever you're doing, we give enthusiasm, encourage you. Okay, do more. What can we say? What can we say? It's all pacifying words. Pacifying words. Encouragement words. But actually, you should do the parikrama. Then, when you get the mercy of Bhagavan, then I'll be able to do the full parikrama for one month. Now we don't have the mercy of Bhagavan yet. If I tell you honestly, you become upset. Oh, I don't have the mercy of God. How come you have the mercy now? You cannot even stay one month there. You think you have mercy? If I tell honestly, you'll be upset. So that's why I say, okay, okay, nice. In four years, you stay one, one week in a parikrama, finally stayed one month. So you have to do parikrama full. But if you cannot do it, what to do? Your body is not helping, like for example, his body is not... Uh, cope, his body doesn't cope, what to do? means you have lack of Sukriti or you don't have the full mercy of Bhagavan yet. And so I have to pray. Those who are doing that's nice. They're making some Sukriti. For seven days or one month you're staying there, you're actually creating Sukriti. You mean the next life? You'll be able to stay like Bhagavan and arrange and everything. Those who are not going, I'm not discouraging you to go, even if for a little time. But you have to understand the reality. You have to understand. Oh, I've done Parikrama. I went to Vrindavan and I sat nicely. I didn't hear Harikata, nothing. Just going here and there. After one month. <laughs> After seven days, I came back house and said, my home, and said, oh, I done parikrama. But what have you done actually? Nothing you did. That's why I said, okay, you make sukriti. You stay in the dham for seven days, and do some sukriti. But when you have the mercy of Bhagavan, then yes. How many saints are in Vrindavan? How many saints? Actually, we are not staying in Vrindavan. The Dhamma is transcendental. They never go out of Vrindavan, some saints. They don't even think about going out. 
They just want to stay in Vrindavan, thinking about Shrimati Radhika. There are many saints like that. They never leave Vrindavan to go anywhere. Do you understand? Like our Goswamis, for example. They don't go anywhere. When Mahaprabhu was there, then they would go to Puri. Otherwise, they would never go anywhere. They would go only Vrindavan and Jagannath Puri. And then after Mahaprabhu disappeared, Rup Sanatana, they never left Vrindavan to go Puri in anywhere. They just stayed in Vrindavan. Radha Kunda. Raghunath Das Goswami only staying in Radha Kunda. No one else. You see, after Mahaprabhu disappeared, Raghunath Das Goswami wouldn't leave Radha Kunda to go anywhere else. <coughs> He wouldn't leave Radha Kunda to go anywhere else. But we go here and there, we go everywhere. Tasa Goswami, no. Only in Radha Kunda. When Mahaprabhu was there, Raghunatha Das Goswami was staying in Radha Kunda. Sorry. When, when Mahaprabhu was there, Dasa Goswami was living in Puri. But after Mahaprabhu disappeared, Raghunatha Das Goswami started living in the Radha Kunda. And he would never leave. There are many saints like that, that they, won't, they don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to go anywhere outside Vraj. They don't want to go daily anywhere. Just in Vrindavan. If I want to die, then I'll be in Vrindavan. So many saints are like this. They make a promise. I can die, but I will never leave Vrindavan, they say. They have this kind of nishta. So they do bhajan. Many saints are like this. They say Vrindavan doing bhajan. They don't want anything. They don't eat anything. They, they are happy with whatever they get. They don't speak to anyone. They don't do anything. They just chant holy names, completely absorbed. Reading the scriptures. If someone comes, they speak to words, otherwise not. When this stage will come to us? This is actually staying in Vrindavan is like this. The Shad Goswami has to come explain how they were staying in Vrindavan. Chanting Radhe Radhe, the holy names of Bhagavan. Not glorifying, not criticizing anyone, not getting involved in anything. They don't want name, fame, reputation, nothing. Whoever comes, they come and. So wake up your soul. Wake up your soul. Why do the saints come to exactly to tell you this? Prakash Ji, you are already Prakash, you are already light, manifested. Wake up. Your Corona, the mercy. You are the personification of mercy. Prakash and Karuna, you are already all the light and mercy. By holy names, one day all this will take place. It's already happening, actually. When you plant a seed and you put water, one day or another, that seed will sprout, will become a plant and will become a tree. You have this hope. Don't worry then. Never be hopeless. Nunca perda de esperança. Nunca perca de esperança. Das Goswami, he says, our only hope is to get the mercy of Shumati Radhika. You can pray, you can pray like this, that I have the mercy of Shumati Radhika. What else to do? How can you chant holy names? You are not hey, chanting properly, actually. You sit to chant and you think about many different hey, things. How can you really chant? Hey, your body doesn't help you, doesn't cope. Does your body help? Cope? No, you feel pain in your body. Isn't it? This disease, that disease, thousand diseases. How can you do bhajan sadhana? 
But still, we have one hope to the feet of Shemati Radha. Get the mercy of Shemati Radha. One day Mahaprabhu will give us mercy. Just continue doing everything with this faith. You take many lives, what problem? What is the problem about that? But Radharani will give mercy. And if you get the mercy, in, immediately you, you get. No need to do anything else. Be without duplicity. Give up offenses and continue doing. Do bhajan. You are serving Vaishnavas. You go to Dham, there is nothing less. Your neighbors are not doing that. They are doing other kind of stuff. You are going to the Dham, serving the Vaishnavas. Whatever Bhagavan has given you. So, Bhagavan actually gave us. And with this wealth, you are serving Guru and Vaishnavas. As much as you are doing, do you understand? This is very good. This is true or not? I'm not glorifying you, I'm telling honestly. God has, maybe in the previous, previous lives, your ancestors have, you have done a lot of pious deeds. His father, his father, 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 father did a lot of pious deeds, your ancestors. Everyone has a lot of pious deeds. As a fruit of these pious deeds, you are also getting these pious deeds. And all of your ancestors, they are happy now. Oh, they are properly using, my son is properly using my wealth. Isn't it? Shastra explains. Shastra says all this. People keep the money and then they give to their son and then son destroys the money by drinking alcohol and bad things. So tell me, no use of this money, only a path to hell. You went to hell and also a, hell, a pathway to hell for your son. But that, that son that left money for you and that money is used in the service of God, then this is really good. Then that ancestor will be very happy and he'll also get benefit because it's his money originally. For example, if you keep money, save money, and then your son use that money for service, you'll be happy after that death. So all these conceptions are there. It's very good. Creating Sukriti, associating with Guru Vaishnav, Slowly, slowly, Bhakti will manifest. It's actually in the snap of a finger, everything will take place. In the snap of a finger, if you get just a little bit side long lens of Radharani, but when it will happen, you don't know. If, if I think, oh, you're, ah, you are a businessman, you're a businessman, you are an enjoyer, but actually if you get the mercy of Shmaterad, in one second you can go and I'll be here behind. Just like the water of the Swatinak Shatra. Oysters. There are thousands of oysters, oysters. There are thousands of oysters with the open mouth. But in which oyster that water of Swatinak Shatra will fall? All of them are open, waiting for the rain, the water. Shastra gives example. But the water of the Swatinak Shatra doesn't fall in all the oysters. There are thousands of oysters. All the oysters are open mouth, thinking, Oh, I want that water of the Swatinak Shatra fall on me. Do you understand? But whoever God gets that rain, special rain, is blessed. These oysters, no? This is the mercy of Bhagavan. So, to whom that mercy of Radharani will go? Who knows? And immediately the person will get the mercy. But maybe the person is doing thousand, thousand sudden bhajan, will continue, will still waiting, and those who just came got the mercy and went very quickly. So you cannot know, you don't know. Try to understand this. You think he's an enjoyer, he stays in his house with his family, wife, husband. He's an enjoyer. I am a sadhu. I wear bread cloth, I took sannyas, I do more bhajan than him. But when the mercy of Radharani will go to you, her sidelong glance, mercy. Whoever, who knows? A sannyas is also praying 
Radha Kripa Kataksh, Agrihas is also praying. A renounced person, both. But who knows who will get the mercy of Radha Rani? The sannyas is sitting down and the Agrihas is getting the mercy of Radha Rani and going directly to go look. Vrindavan, what can you do? So, we have only one hope. All of us. When will we get the mercy of Shamati Radhika? When? Nothing else. Let's go. It's 9 a.m. 9 a.m. That mount is nearby here. Where you can see like a lookout. The other time we went there. I remember everything. <laughs> Let's sit in the car now, go to another place. We're going to the lookout. Huh?